What is going on guys? The moment has finally arrived. Uh, if you saw the Back in Black cover video uh, I did a couple weeks back testing out an Epiphone Gothic SG from the mid-2000s, um, then you probably already know a little bit of the backstory. Uh, but bottom line, um, picked up that guitar for a friend and uh, he wanted me to just completely do an overhaul on it and we were just going to take a, a basic Epiphone and put the best of everything we could into that guitar. Bottom line is we're going to take this Gothic SG behind me and we are going to upgrade it as closely as we can to this, to uh, Gibson SG Custom uh, 2017 in Ebony. Uh, I just went to Sweetwater.com and just pulled the pretty much the latest model up. Um, obviously there's going to be some differences cosmetically, it's not going to have the same inlay work uh, and it will have a different grade of wood, although this one does have a mahogany body um, and it does have a rosewood fretboard and this is actually a rich light fretboard on the, the custom. But outside of that on this guitar we are upgrading it. Uh, we're upgrading to the Grover Gold uh, Tulip Ended Ketone Tuners. We are switching out to a Tone Pros Locking Bridge and Stop Bar Set also in gold. Uh, we're switching out the pick guard, the knobs, the, the mounting screws. All the screws are going to go to gold on this guitar. Switchcraft Output Jack. We're going to be upgrading to CTS 500 Pot Gibson 490R and 498T. Uh, covered pickups in gold with gold screws actually down inside the adjustment screws in the pickup to match the aesthetics of the guitar. Uh, adding in a different gauge of wire. I'm going to be going to a 16 gauge wire for the wiring setup. Uh, orange drop capacitors on it. We're going to be going with a vintage two wire set. Anything we can touch on this guitar we're going to upgrade. It's going to be amazing. We got a lot to do. It's going to be a longer than average video for me. Um, so if you just want to see the difference in the sound go to the end of the video. It'll be at the very end. Other than that let's get started. So first up we need to remove all of the old hardware. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and loosen the strings all the way down to get some slack on them. Uh, I do have a, uh, a Planet Waves drill bit peg winder that works great, especially for quick string changes. Um, I'm going to use an electric drill for almost everything to kind of speed the process up and obviously I'm fast forwarding the video at a faster rate. Uh, if I was to actually show this in real time, uh, this video would be a couple hours long um, with everything we're going to be doing, especially when we start soldering in the electronics. Uh, we're removing all the screws, because uh, we're going to remove obviously the pickups themselves, so the mounting rings are coming off, the pick guards coming off, so we can switch that to the white ply, uh, three ply. Uh, we're removing all the mounting screws on the tuners, because uh, the tuners are going to come out, um, so we can put those uh, Grover tuners in. Um, so there will be some modifications we'll have to, to do with that as well. Um, I am going to save some of these parts, like the screws uh, specifically. Uh, the tuners are, are, are junk, I'm going to get rid of those. Now there are several different ways you can widen the holes for our new Grover tuners. Uh, the most simplistic would just be with a metal file and actually sanding the hole to a larger size, but that would take a lot of time. Uh, I have a drill press, so I, I prefer just to use a slightly larger drill bit and slowly widen the hole out a step at a time. Uh, or you can use a variable drill bit as well, which kind of does the same thing. Uh, there is some maintenance after the fact though. Uh, you will have some little jagged edges possibly or some splinters. You want to clean all those out of course. Uh, so I've got a small grinding bit uh, similar to like you'd use on a Dremel kit and kind of run that through a few laps inside the hole. Uh, once you clean all that out and you've got nice smooth surfaces uh, then we'll go ahead and put the rest of our our tuners onto the back of the guitar and we'll start screwing those uh, all together. Now the truss rod cover uh, is also a custom order. Obviously we're going with the ACDC theme on this guitar, so uh, truss rod cover is a two-ply uh, that says Angus, for Angus Young of course. Uh, one of the many things I typically order from Philadelphia Luthier. Alright, so we've run into a little snag. Obviously we are going to American hardware, so we're going from metric to standard, and we're going from the metric black to gold. Uh, we had a converter set that we got from Philadelphia Luthier for our American Tone Pros bridge that we've already put in, so that's good to go. But on the stop bar, we do not have a converter, uh, nor do we have the proper posts to go into those uh, bushings which are right now obviously still in a black metric form. So we're going to pull those bushings out. I'm going to show you all that really quick. Um, it's actually something I stole from YouTube myself. It's a really really great uh, trick that you use with some PVC pipe. So the short and sweet version is this. You're going to need a piece of PVC pipe 
or something similar. And you're going to need a matching metric bolt that's going to be way longer than the actual posts themselves. To protect the body of the guitar, we're going to put a small paper towel down here. And then we're going to take our PVC pipe, set it right over the top of this paper towel and then I'm going to put a washer on top of that until you don't feel it pull anymore. So then you're going to want to find either the largest screwdriver you can uh, or something that just has a really really easy turning radius. Uh, I'm going to nestle that right in there. Keep uh, basic applied pressure and we're going to start tightening that up. If you start to feel it hit the bottom, you've literally hit the back of the guitar. We just want to tighten it up enough so that it lifts the base of that bushing right out of the guitar body. Alright, I see it coming up and that should be there. Oh yeah. Alright, there you go. I'm going to knock out the other one and we'll get the new bushings put in. Uh, I've already pulled all the electronics uh, just to save some time. We weren't keeping any of the old pots or anything else, so I didn't have to be very meticulous and solder the wires off to try to reuse everything. I, I just cut them out. We're going to throw them away. Uh, if you don't know a whole lot about guitar electronics, um, and are trying to learn some more. Bottom line, we're obviously going to these CTS 500s, uh, and if you compare that to the resistance level and just the sheer size um, of these Chinese pots that uh, you know they they come with, there's there's not even a, a comparison at all. And I've already started to switch out the pickups. So I've got one of my Gibson USA pickups in here. Um, so that's where we're at right now. Um, I'm going to get the other pickup installed really quick. And we're going to start wiring uh, our new potentiometers in. Um, as you can see right now, uh, the cavity itself is, is empty. Um, we are going to be going from, uh, for some reason, even though it's an SG, it came with a vertical three-way toggle switch. Uh, typically your SGs come with a an angle toggle uh, and we're going to set this up with the proper traditional uh, angle toggle switch uh, that you've got in your SGs as well. So so we're just about ready to wire this guy up uh, but real quick before we do that I'm going to touch up a few of these body scrapes and scratches that the guitar has. There's a few surface scratches that actually go through the paint uh, so we're going to touch those up. I use a lot of different things to touch up minor dings and scratches. Um, I've used everything from uh, acrylic craft paints to nail polish, uh, even going as far uh, like I did with this one because of the flat finish on it to go do a color match sample uh, at Lowe's or uh, Home Depot, something like that, um, and try to get the closest sheen you can and get the exact color match. Uh, and then obviously you want to make sure any paint touch-up work that you do uh, to use a really good 1500 or 2000 uh, grit sandpaper um, and get a really good wet sand uh, over the top of that and then seal it off. Uh, we are ready to start soldering our pickups into our pots. Uh, I personally uh, have been for the most part using a Weller 900 watt soldering iron. I've used this one for about two or three years now. Um, and then I usually have a metal tray I'll, I'll place it on with its holder. Um, and I get typically just a, a wet sponge um, that I sit there to actually clean off uh, the tip of the soldering iron in between applications. Um, and I'm using just a basic uh, low gauge electrical solder. All right, so first things first. Uh, you can see here that I've already marked my bridge wire with some green painters tape as well as the uh, bridge solder point uh, for where the wire is going to solder into the selector switch which obviously means the other one is my neck and that'll go into the other side of the selector switch. Now from the selector switch we will then branch it into our volume control, tone control and to our output jack. Now we'll speed up this part of the video because uh, this does take some time. Uh, if you've never done a soldering job before, uh, especially in a guitar, I highly recommend you do some research before you attempt doing this yourself. Um, not only are you dealing with an extremely hot iron, um, but you could definitely mess some things up inside the guitar that can get costly. Um, as you see here, I'm running the wires from my pickups through uh, our selector switch uh, as we switched it to that, uh, that L toggle. Um, also, one of the things I want to point out is, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I do use a lot of larger gauge 
wires, um, which obviously takes up a lot of space, so you have to factor that in. Um, why do I do this? Uh, usually you get a better connection um, electronically. Uh, you don't get as much feedback, um, and they're just stronger wires. You'll have stronger connections long term. Uh, next step, we're going to uh, pinch together our, our output terminals uh, on our toggle switch there. Um, and once we uh, get that together, we can start running our actual output wire, which will go to our first potentiometer. Uh, I am putting in a, a switchcraft uh, jack, obviously. Um, so we're going to get that set up and cleaned up. Um, we're obviously using the CTS 500K pots. Now, here you're seeing obviously the uh, output uh, line running from the toggle switch already over to our volume control. Um, so as we are getting that installed in there, one of the things I wanted to point out is I actually did have to file out the hole a little bit more. That's just one of the side effects when you're using heavier gauge uh, wire. So when you're grounding your wires to the tops of your potentiometers, it's always a great idea to uh, rough up the top of the pots first before you actually ground them and pre-cut your wires. That definitely will help. All right, guys, we are almost done with this guitar. Uh, all the pickups are wired in. Uh, we've got all of our hardware so we can start putting this guitar back together. Uh, I've already checked the relief on the neck uh, with the strings not on the guitar. Once we string it up, we'll see what our relief looks like uh, after it settles in and adjusts. But right now, uh, we're going to focus on polishing these frets down, uh, cleaning them up really, really well um, so everything is nice and, and good to go. Um, I am using the Music Nomad uh, fret polishing kit. Really, really awesome stuff. I've used it a few times before and I, I really like it. I also like a lot of the Music Nomad polishes. Um, I've used the Gibson pump sprays before and some other things. Um, I have another video where uh, I talk about how much I actually use automotive compound. Uh, I use a couple different ones, but um, preferably I use the Meguiar's automotive compound. That stuff's great, especially on nitro lacquer guitars. But Right now, we're going to focus on this. The uh, fret polisher uh, that we're going to use is petroleum free. Uh, it's really good stuff because the kit actually comes with a uh, kind of like a fret uh, guide cover for you to actually put over. It's, it's pretty much called just like a fretboard guard. It comes with three different sizes um, that you simply place over the top of the fret. Um, and then you take your polishing cloth and the actual polish that they provide. Add a little drop of that and you buff it in really, really well, just up and down and going in alternating directions. It takes all the oxidation off the frets. Um, it's gonna pretty much just clean those up and get any uh, old uh, scratches and, and just rough edges from years of use and play. Uh, it's gonna remove that for you. It definitely can extend the life of your frets so you're not having to pay for a refret. All right, we've got our frets all polished up. Uh, I've got a different microfiber cloth now uh, with some fretboard oil on it. Um, we are gonna just kind of run through the fretboard and clean it up, uh, just in case any of that um, fret polish uh, kind of got down onto the wood. The guard does a really good job, but it doesn't prevent everything um, from kind of getting down inside the little crevices around the edges of the fret. Uh, so we're gonna just kind of go over the fretboard here and clean it up with some oil. Oh yeah, beautiful. A couple aesthetic uh, additions. Uh, as you can see, we've got the Angus Young and Malcolm Young autographs on the pick guard now. Uh, we have the ACDC logo and the eight ball. Um, these decals are vinyl applications. Uh, I ordered them from a company called uh, rockstickers23.com. They have an eBay store and a Facebook page you can order things from as well. Um, really, really cool addition if you want to try to just amp up your guitar to the next level. They actually do vinyl uh, application decals of celebrity autographs, band logos, 
logos, uh, random images, you, you name it. And it's high quality vinyl, so it's not gonna come off. Let's get this thing plugged in and let's see how it sounds. Uh, to keep this fair, we're using the exact same amp, a Black Star ID Core 30. We are using the exact same settings. We are using the exact same gain level. And on top of everything else, there is no pedals, no switches, nothing else additional. Just guitar, one chord, and the amp. Here we go. Thank you. 